Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Tell me about good morning and win today. Tell me about good morning and win forever. Tell what is close to you. Say, I have a message for you that is more precious, more valuable than any other thing in this world. Say, are you aware that Jesus loves you? Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. Viewers over the world, we greet you, Emmanuel. Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Tell somebody, you guard your heart. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hallelujah. Yes, that will be our message for today. Titled, Guide Your Heart. Once again, tell somebody, guide your heart. Let's quickly open our Bible to the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 4. We'll take our reading from verse 20 to 23. Hallelujah. Are you there? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to 23. And when you go back home, please read from verse 1 to the end. Hallelujah. It says, My son, give attention to my word. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Verse 23, which is our proof text. says, keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it spring the issues of, I can't hear you. Out of it spring what? Hallelujah. Once again, tell anybody, guide your heart. That's what he beside you say, guide your heart. Christian, seek not yet repose. Hear thy guardian angel sing. Thou art in the midst of fools. Watch and pray. Somebody guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Keep your heart in the storm of life. Keep your heart in what? In the storm of life. When everything around you is looking unsteady, guard your heart. Because out of it flows what? The issues of life. It is the wish and desire of God Almighty for us to be unmovably, firmly, steadfast in God's promises for our life. It is what? The wish of God Almighty for us to be unmovably, firmly, steadfast in God's promises for our life. No wonder the Bible says that if you are not hot or cold, I will do what? I will spit you out. 
Revelation chapter 3, verse 16. If you are not hot or cold, I will do what? Spit you out. That is, we can't be in a state of dilemma with God. We can't be what? In a state of dilemma with God. We cannot be for or against with God. If you are conscious of yourself, you can never be conscious of your faith. If you are what? Conscious of yourself, you can never be conscious of your faith. Tell anybody, if you are conscious of yourself, you can never be conscious of your faith. I can't hear you. That is, if you are conscious of your problems, you can never be conscious of God's presence in your life. If you are conscious of what is happening around you, you can never be what? Conscious of God's presence, God's blessings in your life. The story of Elisha and his servant. In that book of 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15 to 17. It's a clear example for us. Elisha's servant was conscious of the enemies that surrounded them. But he was not conscious of the mighty protection they were under. He was what? Conscious of the enemies. That's why he was afraid. But he was not conscious of the mighty protection, the mighty power they were under. Once again, tell anybody, if you are conscious of yourself, you cannot be conscious of your faith. That is why today many of us will begin to murmur and eventually walk out of God's promises and blessings for our life. When things doesn't go our way. According to that book of Joshua, chapter 24, Joshua knew the attitude of the children of Israel towards trials, towards temptation, towards persecution right from the days of Moses. That was why Joshua took the bold step of faith by asking them, he challenged them to choose whom they will serve. But as for him and his household, he will serve the Lord God Almighty. Joshua knew that if he was conscious of his situation, he wasn't able to see what beyond the current issues they were facing. He knew that if he was conscious of what was happening around him, he wouldn't be able to see what beyond the issues. And beyond the issues, there lies God's promises and blessings. Beyond your challenges, there lies... God's blessings and promises. That was why Joshua chose to be what? Conscious of his faith. Irrespective of unpleasant circumstances around him. People of God, we say to you today, choose whom you shall serve. But as for us, we shall serve the Lord God Almighty, the God of Prativi Joshua. We we'll say to you today, choose who, which God you are going to serve. But as for us, we shall serve the Lord God Almighty, the God of Prophet C.B. Joshua. And there's no turning back. If you are serving Jesus because of gain, because of money, when there is nothing to gain, what will happen to you? If you are serving him because of gain, when there is nothing to gain, what are you going to do? That is why our Lord Jesus Christ warned us that I pray that your faith should not what? Fail you. 
He said what? I pray that your faith should not what? Fail you. He knew that there will be trying times. There will be seasons that will test our faith. That is why he warned them. So that the wise among them will guard their hearts. If your faith in Christ Jesus is based on miracle, material blessings, breakthrough, name them, what will happen when there's nothing to your faith? What will be of your faith if it is based on what? Miracle, blessings. What will happen to your faith when there's nothing? That is why we must base our faith on the word of God, on the finished work of God in Christ Jesus. Because for our faith to be constant, to be consistent, it must be based what, on something which is more consistent than our feelings and our emotion, which is God's word. People of God, guard your heart because Satan's target is your heart. To get you into confusion, that is why today, many of their faith is shaking. Because if they don't receive, they won't believe God. If they don't receive blessings, they won't believe God. But a man of faith, who works by faith and not by sight, and his focus is on salvation, his confession will always be that whether God heals him or not, nothing can change his focus. Whether God bless him or not, Nothing can change his focus. Whether he receives breakthrough or not, nothing will ever dictate his direction. We say to you today, people of God, who are you? Ask your conscience. Why are you here? Are you here only to receive? What will happen to your faith when you don't receive, or when God choose to test your faith to know how genuine you are. Hmm. Only time we tell. Then your true nature will be what? Revealed. Tell you about, during your season of test and trial, then your true nature will be revealed. Are you a believer? Are you afraid of persecution? Then you are not ready to follow Jesus. Are you a Christian? Are you afraid of trial? Then your genuineness is questionable. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to us that he that wants to follow him should do what? Should take up his cross and do what? And follow him. A wonderful weddings of a powerful hymn says, take up your cross and do what? And follow Christ. Not until death you do what? You lay it down. For only those who take up the cross shall do what? Shall wear the golden crown. <clears throat> we want crown. Am I right? And we are afraid of persecution. Only those who take up the cross shall do what? Shall wear the golden crown. The crown of victory. Do you want crown? Then guard your heart. Because only those whose heart is well guided can take up the cross. Ask Apostle Peter and he will tell you that it wasn't easy. Ask Stephen the Matthias, and he will tell you that if his heart was not well guided with the word of God, he would have denounced his faith in Christ Jesus when he was being stoned to death. Ask Apostle Paul, and he will tell you that if he did not keep his heart and guard his heart well with the word of God, he would have stopped preaching the gospel when he knew that it would lead what to his execution. But his confession was to live is for Christ. 
It is worth suffering for Christ. And his death was, was his gain to what? To eternal glory. What a confession. Tell you, guard your heart. Because it is the seat of your will and emotions. Guard your heart because it is the contact point for the Holy Spirit. Guard your heart because Satan's target is your heart. Guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. Somebody, if you are conscious of yourself, you can never be conscious of your faith. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hey, the viewers, viewers, if you are conscious of yourself, you can never be conscious of your faith in Christ Jesus. Therefore, guide your heart. Our Lord Jesus is saying to us today that in this world, we will face persecution. In this world, we will face trials. In this world, we will face temptation, intimidation, because this world is not our home. But he assured us to be of good cheer because he has overcome the world. What a great hope. God bless his word.